it is starts with that number white wolf fire session 22 time for the recap we were mining uh mining for 30 days and 30 nights uh just shy of the biblical the biblical <laughs> significance so that's how we know we're not that's how we know we're not in good graces right now uh, um, charlie uh, charlie and rose uh came to visit they walked through a wall uh of our ship um and uh gave us a mission to to rescue subject 331 from an uncharted area or uncharted sector of space at a prison that was or prison or lab that wasn't really quite clear um, what the facility was um, exactly uh, because when we got there it definitely had a lab feel to it um, but it's run by the Sisters of Karma and uh, Paul Anko was going to meet up with us uh, and help us get there. Uh, he, apparently, he had a gig playing playing at the prison lab, so we got to reunite with his tour manager, um, which was which was great fun. Uh, when we arrived there, it was about two jumps away. Uh, they extended the bridge out to us. Paul Anko was shown to a VIP room, um, and he was doing his uh, pre-show warm-ups. Corvald asked to get a tour of the facility and they agreed and it was say here's this room and then there's this hallway and then uh that's the tour <laughs> you forget the uh the pantry that they had stuffed full of everything that came out of the room Paul was in <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's right yep and then uh uh, I think Corval was just wandering, and then Anne May and I were playing uh, poker with some of the guards um, who were being very cagey about any closed doors. There was a closed door to a, a place that they called the control room. Then we were not allowed to go in there. Yeah. Uh, but we went in there anyway, um, eventually. No, no, not we. I'd never set foot in there. <laughs> uh Corvald went in there. He teleported. Um before I'm that though, <laughs> there was somebody who came in um out of the control room, I believe. Um maybe from somewhere else. They were wearing a red back suit with a mop and a bucket. And they were going to clean the porta john that was also in the same room that we were in. Um and their face was caught in like it was like it was stuck in a perpetual screen. Uh, they had green eyes, and then uh, the guard just took it, and one of the guards just took it and decided to do it himself. So yeah, Cor Corvald went, uh, Paul, Paul Anka started the cards, or uh, Corvald went to the board of John um, and teleported directly into the control room, got immediately caught by the supervisor. Um, there was one other person in there, besides the supervisor, it was Larry, uh, who is, appears to be the, one, the only one who was forced to work during the show i think then we started to like it's gonna start shooting a bitch that wasn't the plan but that's what i turned into yep uh and we took the yeah we took the uh oh what's the word we took the uh physical way out um <laughs> through the situation uh we ended up rescue we were, we were able to at least uh get get to um the prisoner um which was 311 which it, turned out to be a Donna from Niles crew, which was an old uh, an older woman. One of Corvald's old flames, I'm sure. One of many. <laughs> then that's where my notes end. Um I so I don't remember if we, we got out or if we like uh, ended. Uh it was mostly us trying to contain the concert goers who kept trying to get up and leave to go after anime in the control room. You and I were basically on sit in your chairs duty. That's right. And uh, when anime did come out, some of the people came out of that room after anime had shot someone and started a riot, which we then had to put a stop to with as gentle force as possible as we blew several of them into piles of ashes. And, uh, I think Corvald was the only one who actually managed to get slapped around too much. Uh, they tried to go after Paul a couple of times. I don't think that went well. I think I got hit once maybe, and then 
Everything else was kind of just skipping off of his armor. And then Anne May showed up and gunned a few more of them down, and the rest surrendered. Yep. That's when uh, we decided to recruit them, and I'd march them out to the ship in a pressure field after threatening that if any of them tried anything stupid, he would turn off their part of the pressure field and let them float off into space. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, nothing says cooperate like an imminent painful death. <laughs> Stop resisting. I believe Anne May had called ahead and told our truck to turn into a mech and walk around looking all intimidating as well. Just to make sure that they didn't get any bright ideas <laughs> if they got on board. And I believe that's where we left off. Yes. Yeah, that sounds about right. We had the lady, and then we discovered something on TV, well, on one of the monitors, and that's where it ended. Yeah, there was the poker game. Uh, yeah, the Porta John. Um, I swapped a key card while we were playing poker. Yeah, hit, yeah, you did the thing with the key card. <laughs> yeah. I hit it for a bit, and then gave it to Anne May. That's how she. Well, no, she didn't even need it to get in the control room. Nope, I just followed. Yeah, and Corval did the thing where he went in the port of John and then teleported and then went inside the control yeah. room and locked the door. Honestly, besides shooting, we really didn't have many options in that mission. <laughs> we tried not a lot all. of different things. Well, none, none of us are registered 007, so. No. All right. So you have uh, five members of the facility who have been captured who instead of being murderized, they are now part of the crew as Anne May realizes that uh, you need a lot more people to run this ship than yourselves. Oh, that's they, right. We killed six, but Paul Anka's uh, tour manager also had one wrapped up in a microphone cord or something, and we yeah. told him to go ahead and have his fun with that one. <laughs> yeah, he choked one out. Yeah, he seemed pretty into it. <laughs> uh, Paul's gear has been damaged. And the tour manager is is uh, lamenting that and the whole scene that happened and uh, glad they got paid up front. Paul is relaxing in the quarters that you have provided for him, decompressing from what has happened. I doubt he will ever agree to work with us again after two failed concerts in a row. <laughs> but he got paid at least once. <laughs> but he has been shot at at least twice. <laughs> you know, for many musicians, that's considered a success. <laughs> Three times he's been shot at in our company. <laughs> As a rap artist, he has street cred now. <laughs> Adana has, she's wearing like some kind of rubberized suit that's like stuck to her. And when you pull off her mask, you realize that uh, it took some of the skin like right off her face. So she's got like splotches of exposed skin. Just and, like uh, and she, uh, she, she, that's when she looked at Anne and said, I knew that someone from the, from the order would save me. Well, we're not. What do you mean from the order? Well, she looks at Anne and she says, it's, uh, this is Amina. She is from the Order of the Dead Light. I thought I recognized you when you were on Niles' ship, but I wasn't sure. I was in no position to do anything, but... but uh, and hurt herself in her confusion. Um, are you sure about that? Oh, yes, I... Though no, there's something different about you, I'm not really sure. But you're definitely her. Amina, you say? Yeah. And and May, do you have something you'd like to tell us about yourself? You also called Amina? Is that your stage name or something? Not I know of. Never performed. No, she that was part of the pilot uh, and training program for the for the drones that were being the for the drone project that was done for Sindhu. It had to be uh, abandoned because of issues with the, when Sindhu fell and the children of the sector rose up. 
everyone who was at the facility had their identity summarily wiped so they couldn't be a threat or traced back. But, I remember none of this. Well, that, that was the whole plan. So how, uh, why wasn't your memory wiped? Oh, I, well, Corval, when you get our age, we are, we are very, we may not be spry, but we are very crafty. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, tr trust me, I'm still plenty spry. I'm not that old yet. <laughs> Mina, huh? So there's this drone program. What were they planning on doing with it? Do you remember? Well, if, I mean, they were, it's going to be part of their, their fleet, uh, but it was, it was taken down, of course. Hmm. I believe some of the children in the sector, Sisters of Karma, one of them, came in and pretty much wiped out the facility. Oh, my. It was a unique program because it was using actual brains. So they took out some of her brain? No, I don't have much to begin with. No, they were they were harvested. We were growing them in a separate uh, place in the in, in the system. But that is uh, that's a story of long ago. But uh, you, I don't know how why you how you found me, but I am relieved that I have been saved. How did you get captured? Did Niles leave you to die too? Captured he. Niles sent me into sent me to this prison. He he was did not trust me. I guess his judgment. Uh, I'm not sure about it anymore. Yeah, that guy sucks. We should blow him up. Where is he? He has gone somewhere. He said it was a city in the sky. I think I know that city. A bit familiar with it. We should definitely blow him up. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah. What lovely things explode that we can use. Well, we could aim the ship at it and then just get in the cargo light and fly off to the side right before it breaks atmosphere. That is tempting. I like what you're thinking. <laughs> I do like your style. Rose does, yeah. like, Rose does like fire. I bet that would be a big fire. Maybe I missed this, but uh, why did he send you here? I objected a few times. I objected to what he was, what he did to you, and when, when he sent you into that obsidian, retrieved that obsidian statue, and then he uh, he didn't take kindly to to my objections. I guess I was disposable. The statue. What can you tell us about it? Not much. It was, he said it was part of a project that he had worked on for Sindhum. He used to be some sort of professor. He said that was part of the, it was his destiny to, to find it again. How interesting. Sounds like something to do with the time stuff. Does he have power to go back in time? Or what was... We were we were in some sort of machine stasis that sent us back to I don't know, it was definitely not this age. When did you know of this? Uh I know those those statues are from an ancient race that presumably uh either created or populated the entire known universe, but uh they have strange powers. I know that he was trying to uh, trying to discover or unlock them, but he is he wants what every seems like everyone from Sindhum wants is to restore to the old glory days. Do you share that vision? Not at the cost that uh, that seems to be paid. Um, when you get my age, everything has a cycle, and the cycle for Sindhum was was ending, and a new age was beginning. 
Mm. Doesn't sound healthy for most of the galaxy. No. No, there are always rumors that Jaggerfels is still alive, that he is at some hideaway base, buried among the stars, waiting to return. That his that his elite uh, scientists and um, thinkers and are hiding on various planets, just waiting for him to to arrive again. Is Corval aware of those rumors? Um, or, yeah, I mean, or... you would have heard of it. I mean, like any, you know, Jaggerfels was such a huge, uh, per, you know, huge personality, uh, of, you know, a huge leader in the the entire uh, Helena Evo, that entire sector. That, you know, anytime somebody, they claim he's dead, you know, no, he's not. He's alive somewhere. So those rumors would be instant. Like, he's gone this. He's over, there's been sightings of him. But you have heard that uh, the children of the sector have been looking for people who used to belong to Sindhu. That's not a surprise. That They've been looking for them for years. Like, they still look for them. So the fact that they're looking for people from the Order of the Dead Light is not a surprise because, you know, that's an old Sindhu as you've heard, us old Sindhum program. So they would yeah. want to find them. I think people are just, just uh, trying to, or just willing to believe whatever they can to uh, uh, avoid uh, dealing with the fact that Jaggerfels is gone and a, a new age is upon them. Yes, and also I know Sindhum spent uh, a great amount of resources and time on that replicant program, and it wouldn't surprise me if they somewhere they they existed. So either the Jagger Fells or Jagger Fells the the replicant. I don't know which one would be worse or better. Or both. Well, hopefully the replicant wouldn't be too hard to find if there was one. Yes. I think the major major issue is if Jagafels really is alive still. Uh, well, it seems that Sisters of Karma and Children of the Sector seem to have at least a handle on some things. He would only return if the situation was was prudent and he could uh, resume his power, at least to some degree, but. Out of character, what is left of Sindhum right now? Because the planet got hit pretty hard. Yeah, the planet is like, a, is a big pile of rubble. I mean, it's, the, the bald city was uh, seriously damaged. It was looted. Um, it's it's kind of a holy site at this point. People still live there in the wreckage, but it's kind of like a holy site. I mean, but uh, that's pretty much the extent of it. You know, there are pockets of of people who probably you know who favor the old time, the old ways, but uh, you know they're not going to say too much. Things like, uh, do we know how much of their fleet survived or anything like that? Any old Sindhu ships floating around there? Uh, they didn't have much of a fleet because that was all a mirage. Uh, um, but yeah, there's not Sindhu. If it's a Sindhu ship, it's been repurposed by somebody. Okay. I don't really know what he try and do. He doesn't have any ships. He doesn't have any resources at the moment. Wouldn't make sense for him to try and come back now. Well, I think just as well. That's why they're trying all these strange and advanced technologies to sort to of even the playing field. I think if we can get to uh, Niles in this city in the sky, then we can 
eliminate any possibility of him undoing the order of things. Mm -hmm. How does the city in the sky stay afloat? Great question. It is a great question. How does it, you asked her how it stays afloat? Yes. I, I don't know. I have, I've never seen it. I, Niles just spoke of it. He, he used to go to some place, uh, Crimson Vapor, I think, when he would have dealings with the, with those in the Sky City. Did he ever mention anything about nanomachines? Oh. <laughs> I... I know he collected some from from all of you. I don't know what is what has become of them. I'm afraid to find out. Same thing as what was on the planet. Yeah, if he's if he's where it sounds like he is, the atmosphere on that planet seems to be full of those things. So what does Rose know about the planet then that's so important? I don't know. You'd have to ask her. Corval, did you get her number? I was trying, but Charlie was giving me all these knowing <laughs> looks. <laughs> He's jealous of your good looks. Well, we need more information about what's going on. I think we'll have to, it sounds like we'll need to go back at all. All signs point to the sky city. Indeed. But well, what's Rose's relationship with the people from Sky City? She told us once before to save the people, but did she mean the people in the Sky City or the people down on the surface? That's one of the things that she meant to save the people. What does that mean exactly? And why does she want to save the people precisely? I don't know. Them guys down in the jungle don't seem like they have a whole lot of cares except people in the Sky City want to kill them for not working the fields and all that. There's but something more to this. Who knows? Maybe the whole place is a lot better without those guys running around out in the jungle. Could be either. Now, the nanomachines are important for some reason. And Rose probably has knowledge of them to some degree. I mean, we can ask her. Indeed, if she was here. If you had if she can... I'm hmm? working on it. There's something called the long game, Sonny. You <laughs> would be best to learn it. I don't think we have the long game. <laughs> well, you don't, but... Uh, that is true. <laughs> I've been working on it for quite some time. I think and we can see if we can petition an audience with Rose, but uh, either way, we should, sounds like we know where our, our next destination is. Indeed. Probably drop off Paul and his manager somewhere before we head anywhere near that place. No, who knows? They might want to perform there. <laughs> That that actually could be. Uh, I I I agree with that. May we might be able to seek an audience through uh, Paul getting a booking that uh, may may make it easier, or at least bare minimum, uh, be an excuse to get uh, to get into um, an establishment on the Sky City. Wasn't we there? Wasn't there already a Paul Anka at the Crimson Vapor, though? Yes, and he ran incredibly quickly and was quite strong. I think you destroyed him, too. <laughs> didn't you? He, yeah, yeah. We Did we kill him. Paul Anka? We killed one person. I don't know if we got Paul Anka, too. I'm pretty <laughs> sure it was Paul Anka. Well, he certainly tried. If he's alive, was not for lack of effort. Yeah, or was it the doorman? I think you got the doorman. I think we got the doorman and Paul Anka made it back because he ran away. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, if there's a, if there are multiple Paul Ankas, uh, there's a replicant, then uh, even better, we'll have a, 
he will already be known. He may even have a usual spot. He may have like a Thursday night show. Who knows? Mm. Does Paul do Thursday nights? Paul! He comes out of his room. Somebody call. I was decompressing. You look normal size to me. <laughs> Do you perform on Thursdays? He looks over at his store manager. He's like, yeah, I do. I do, yes. There you go. Is there a day of the week that you do not perform? Uh, usually when I don't get paid. It's a good answer. And uh, if there were, if there Ooh, were an evil good. version, if there were an evil version of yourself, how would you know who the real one is? Evil version of me. I never thought of that. You don't have to think of me now. Think of it now, but keep it in mind because we might come across that um, in the near future. I have to find out who their manager is. It'll probably be probably a pretty good manager if uh, the law of opposites is true. <laughs> hmm. You can see he ponders that. Huh? I'll, I'll... And then looks over at his tour manager and looks back at you, and then he heads into his room. <laughs> tour manager just shakes his head at you. His tour manager is taking 50%. He's like the colonel with Elvis. <laughs> I forgot what the tours manager's name is. I've never named him. If I have, I don't remember. <laughs> and I rode through space with the manager with no name. It felt yeah. good of the planet. I, you know, the, just the tour manager. Is, yeah, I've, yeah, I was like, did I name him in the... No, I was just like, I just went with tour manager the whole time. I think he's outlived his life expectancy. <laughs> yeah, yes. So Adana's like, well, I know that you would be received at uh, at Boros. We we may be able to help uh, help your cause or our cause, since I am I am just as willing to. Um, take care of Niles once and for all. I really would like to get um, Quarta and Dane back. They don't need to be mixed up with him. So your option of, of destroying the city, I don't know the defenses and I don't know what your capabilities are, but if we could retrieve them, they don't need to follow the same fate as him. But the Order of the Dead Light would gladly like to see you again, Amina. There is a small collection of us that still exist on Boros. Despite what uh, the children of the sector said, it has not been terraformed. It is still a wasteland. We should probably get going towards Boros. Yeah, maybe we can sell all that junk we mined. Yeah, I got some money for some way of dealing with this problem. And some food. We have food. What 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 food do you want? Yeah, I'd like to get some food that doesn't taste like prunes. You gotta reprogram the food processor. We could just reprogram <laughs> it. It's like a 10 second thing. Reset yeah, yeah. button. Yeah, Corval probably locked you all out. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he locked it out with a password in 2FA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the password for Corvold is 12345. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> it's a password with an at symbol. Um, oh, shit. I'm going to figure that one out. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Yep, but to do a quick 
a few it's, jumps to try and head to Boros. It's just a placeholder password until he gets Rose's phone number, and then that'll be the password. If we're about to jump, I better head back down to the cargo bay and get that truck settled back in so it doesn't go flying all over the place and tear up my cargo. Well, I'm a good pilot now, so I'll get us go off. I'll get us in the right direction. Oh, I'll I'll strap the truck in and then I'll strap me in. That's probably for the best. <laughs> All right, give me five minutes before you do anything crazy. You see, I just take off running down the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> T minus four minutes fifty nine seconds. <laughs> So on Smack, there is Sonari Rim is a, that's a place you can go have the stuff refined, drop off your uh, your min minerals and stuff. We can go sell off our our high gain loot. <laughs> yeah. What system is that? It's in Smack. It's in Smack. Probably have to stop off there anyway to get fuel. Are we able to stock enough borax to be able to make the jump to Zeal? What? Let's see. What sector were you guys in? We're in prime sector because we were at the. Uh... Oh, you're in the prime. Yeah, it's just one jump over. Smack is one jump over. But then from there to where we actually have to go, I don't remember how far we can jump. Josh is the ship guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's three. I think we have a class three jump, I believe he said, but I can't remember how yeah. far we can hop on that in one go. Yeah. Uh, well, you can go. So, yeah, you, you, there's enough borax to do two jumps. Okay. Okay. So we can jump three spaces and we can do two jumps. So we, we would be able to, um, we would be able to uh, make, make it all the way up to Zeal. If we needed to, or we could do shoal to string. What system is Boros in? It's in swarm. Yeah. All right. We can uh, head to the smack system, uh, fuel up, and then zero, and then swarm. Sounds good to me. I got this this daggone mech truck strapped in. Just let me uh, buckle up here. I'm sure we've got some kind of jump seat back here or a crate or something. You head to the smack system to the planet of Sonari Rim to drop off all the ore. Um, and in the process of doing that, as they're collecting all this and, you know, figuring everything out, and, um, what is everybody doing? I, I've met, like, I guess I, you're just watching, making sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, offloading the stuff. Yeah. Are they going to send their own cargo lot up to collect everything so we don't have to fly ours out? Yeah, they would come and collect all of it. Once they figured out what you had, they would uh, gladly make the uh, arrangements to take care of it. So as they've done all that uh, in the ship, I guess your ship, uh, I guess you wouldn't need to land. I guess you could just be in orbit as they come and collect it. I guess that'd probably be easier. Yeah, I don't think our ship's actually supposed to land. Oh, okay. I think then it's too, too big, technically. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then that makes sense. So as you're doing that and collecting and getting your big bucks, uh, checking on your accounts, you hear the the familiar noise of the food processor as you're in the galley, uh, and you look over and there's a man in a robe there. It's Charlie filling up his cup uh, with the uh, good old prune paste. Ah, good taste. Oh, I <laughs> something's dependable these days. It takes a slip. I'm on my third cup already. <laughs> it can never be too regular, they say. Never. Uh, listen, Charlie, uh, I have a question for you. And if you're not able to answer it, maybe you can pass it to Rose. Oh, oh, okay. 
we're heading to the Sky City, back to where we where we first encountered you guys. Oh yes, the Sky and, Ag Agraria. Okay. Agraria, yes. Uh, Rose commanded us to save the people. And oh yeah, yeah. She uh, she definitely has a soft spot for them. Which people did she want us to save? Well, the agrarians. I I would assume. Yeah. I, I thought so. Uh, but so that's the people on the ground, not the people in the city. No, but uh, I know some of the agrarians. I believe were reeducated and work in Sky City now. But uh, that may be a little bit complicated. I remember they tried sending me to get re-educated and it didn't work. Two old dogs don't learn new tricks, they say. I would, uh, and I wouldn't discount the prune juice either. That also, that also helps with your resistances. Oh, I better get the fourth or fifth cup. I gotta load up even more than usual. <laughs> yes. Well, we're used to seeing agrarians do, but we've never, as far as I've known, seen anyone from the Sky City. Is there an obvious way to tell them apart, or do they, do they just look like agrarians? Oh, I, I thought you met a few of them. They, I know that there was those flying robots, right? The those the robots, not people. Those with those wings. I, I think you. I think there are some that look fairly humanoid. They came and spoke to you. Oh. We'd probably let Anime handle the talking. Yeah, the talking. Yeah, she's a great talker. Um, sometimes not with her mouth, but... Uh... <laughs> she can be persuasive, though. Are there any people in the city that are worth saving? Hypothetically, uh, we run into a situation where the whole city needs to or somehow gets destroyed, and uh, we have time to save a number of people. Um, are there any, any besides the agrarians who have been potentially re-educated, are there, is there, are there any followers of Rose or, and he kind of, uh, the Corval kind of leans closer? Her sisters in the city. Her sisters. You you mean? Uh, oh. Well, I know Rose would be concerned if if if, if even one was was lost, but. Uh, Practically, it'd be very difficult. I, I would have to, uh, I would have to to look into this with her. Get her thoughts. I think if uh, if if I don't, if I recall, I, I think that those who are re-educated. There, there's probably some sort of central control node or some sort of. Uh, uh, beacon or something or that can be removed that may free them. So it may be a situ it may be a situation where if you take down the control center that may relinquish some of the power Sky City has on some of them. Well, before you uh, walk off through another wall or something, I don't suppose you have like a phone number or something you could leave in case we have any more questions. Phone number? I, no, no. I, I mean, I maybe a pager. <laughs> pager. <laughs> no, no. The lady yeah. always listens. She's always listening. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. Are you always listening too? Uh. I mean, I mean, from whatever I can get, because I have to really kind of get close to see if I can hear. 
and whatever she tells me, whatever she whispers in that with in our pillow talks. Oh. <laughs> Probably best to assume he can hear Corvald. All good. <laughs> I'm glad the matter is settled. <laughs> well, there will always be more prune juice whenever you need. Just feel free to stop by. Um, as long as these, uh, as long as these heathens don't uh, change it. <laughs> all we wanted was it to be you know selectable you can still get prune juice you just don't have to make us eat it too i'll consider it <laughs> it is really good for your diet yeah see he goes he brings his cup over to the, the food processor gets a refill it is it's quality yeah, but every now and then a nice bacon cheeseburger just hits the spot. It does. But not on this ship. Oh, uh, well. Corval won't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a part of my cleanse. It's your cleanse, though. You don't have to make us all cleanse. <laughs> fine I will work on making it selectable <laughs> uh, have you uh, kept in contact or uh, with, with uh, Agraria of late uh, I don't know if Rose seems to have knowledge of things I don't know exactly i don't know exactly if she is aware of what's going on but well, it's not out of the realm of possibility she is she's very much aware of what's happening at least if we go back this time we won't have to worry about carlton starting a riot and trying to fight for both sides <laughs> oh yes carlton <laughs> that is true it should be easier to pass them around. <laughs> so if you were going to go to Sky City, what uh, what would be the first place to start? Usually a landing pad. Right. <laughs> but uh, we got to see if we can book Paul Anka um, somewhere. And uh, I'm just not familiar with the venues. I'm more of a uh, middle of the jungle kind of guy myself. <laughs> well, we know those guys would love a concert, but I doubt they have anything to pay with. Yeah, they probably just, I don't know. I don't know what they would give. Well, last time we were there, they tried to make Anne May their goddess or something. Uh, we'll figure it out. Uh, have you met Adana? Oh, no. Uh, you can see she's still in that rubber suit, just kind of sitting there, drinking the prune juice with approval. We uh, sprung her from her, her uh, sprung her from the, the prison lab. Yes, yes. Uh, Rose mentioned something about that. She was quite pleased. Well, good. I'm glad to hear. We only had to kill half of the staff before the rest surrendered. Well, it comes with the territory, unfortunately. I tried to warn them. They just, they weren't hearing it. Yes, they tried everything they could to uh, avoid having uh, having us go anywhere other than the uh, main room. And the yes. portable. 
I'll uh, I'll discuss with Rose about the uh, Sky City and what uh, what she thinks the best course of action is. And let her know my votes on we just level that place. And what the uh, collateral damage uh, is acceptable. So, thank you. It's, uh, most appreciated. Well, let's get the show on the road. Everyone's strapped in. All right. So, uh, yeah, he just he fills up his uh, prune juice to the rim again, and uh, kind of just steps through the wall. And you hear like a door close. I'd love to know how they get a how the how they get into this place. I figured if anyone understood it, it was you. I've seen you just pop up out of nowhere plenty of times. Yeah, but that's just psychic work. Well, I mean, could be psychic work for them too. Maybe they're just better at it. Yeah, it doesn't make a door sound when I go anywhere though. Ah, uh, that's true. I never have heard a door slam behind me. Well, I got to start filling all this paperwork out so we can show Anne May how much we got paid for all them rocks and whatnot. All right. Try not to flip the ship. I'm just going to sit here and work on the table since I don't have a desk. <laughs> all right. Uh, and you guys head out and jump into the metadimensional space. And eventually uh, you arrive in the swarm system with the uh, Vanguard Nebula shipbuilding station, which is a huge station floating out in space where they build most of the uh, starships. A yellow dwarf star. And there is the planet Burroughs. Uh, you can see it's yellow and red in the distance. And uh, basically there's like no atmosphere here. I'm going to head up and see if Ann May's on the bridge. If she's not, I'm going to head to her quarters and knock on the door. Um, yeah, she's in her quarters. Approach the door and knock on it. Come in. Yeah, here you go, boss. I just uh, wanted to give you the report where we offloaded all that cargo while we were getting yeah. fuel. Oh, um, thank you. Thank you. So I'll, I'll hand her a meticulously organized cargo manifest of all that ore we mined and how much we sold it for, however many big bucks that was. Yeah, whatever you were supposed to get in the book. Okay. Uh, it would have been... Um, 15,000 credits. Yeah. However many big bucks that converts to. Massive uh, big bucks. Massive big buck payout. <laughs> I could have sworn that manifest was spelt with a PH, but the F makes more sense. Um, great. <laughs> great. Th thank you very much, Ide. Um, we're in the Boros system, correct? Uh, yep. Hopefully. Corval was driving, so maybe. Oh, my. Well. Unless he found out about some place that had, you know, more prunes. Well, there was the place that we passed that had the cool ranch Doritos. Oh, you hear like you hear just that they, you just hear like over the comms there. Like, oh, that <laughs> I knew he was listening to me with a secret camera, and I'm going to look in my teddy bear for the camera he has. <laughs> um, well, don't get too excited, but I might have talked him into reprogramming that food replicator thing. Well, finally, something decent. He'll still have his prune juice, but the rest of us might get to pick what we want to eat now. <laughs> Miss Corval, do you really think that's going to happen? He said he'd think about it. That's making progress, okay? <laughs> well, he's always been quick-witted, that's for certain. Um, okay, then, I guess it's time for me to meet my extended family, maybe? I don't even know what's going on anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. That that creepy lady was still sitting in the galley sipping prune juice when I left. Yeah. We should probably go talk to her. 
Oh, you go right on ahead. I got to go uh, make sure the cargo bay is ready for anything else we pick up. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I was just going to scurry off. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to go down there and find out who I need to contact to find the rest of my folks. Okay. Adana, the old lady, older lady, is is uh, down, still down in the galley, sipping her prune juice. She's wearing like some loose fitting kind of clothing, because uh, when that suit was kind of removed, it basically ripped parts of her skin off. It had to be kind of like so it like adhered to her. So uh, she's on some kind of probably tranquilizers and sobs and bombs and um. That's okay. Anne May's in sweatpants, an oversized sweater, and Ugg boots. She is like completely not there today. <laughs> oh, these uh, prune juice is delightful. It, it truly is, yes. Um, we're near Boros. Oh, good. How do we get in contact with them? Uh, I will, I will give you the coordinates. Uh, we will take a shuttle craft, I would assume, to the surface. Yes. We have a cargo light in the shuttle. Oh. oh, okay. Anytime you're ready, I guess. She makes her way to the, uh, the helm. Okay. And uh, she lets you know the coordinates. So you guys kind of set the ship. I, oh, so who's in, well, Paul, so who are you putting in charge? That's the question, because uh, you got Paul, <laughs> Paul's still with you. I, I think the obvious choice is Paul's manager, because he seems Paul's so man. Different. Paul's tour manager has been put in charge. He, this is, he, uh, he, he's not surprised. He figures this is the obvious choice. It is. <laughs> and he reminds the five of them that uh, he just, all he does is like show them some uh, speaker wire and says, listen, you don't listen. <laughs> I know how to use this. Yeah, I would imagine we programmed like a, a security code or a biometric lock on the ship's armory too. <laughs> it's yeah. an infant of anime's breast. <laughs> Well, we have that uh, F-350. Yeah. Well, we do have F-350. Yep. Yeah. Yet somehow I trust the two a manager more. <laughs> and we locked all the illicit stuff in the uh, smuggler's hold, which has a eye, eye scan and a fingerprint reader. <laughs> Even F-350 can't open that. He doesn't have fingerprints. Oh. I don't think you can pass the urine sample either. <laughs> oh, when did you have that installed? <laughs> yes, uh, take the uh, cargo lighter down then. So yeah, you approach the planet and it looks like a, just kind of uh, a wasteland. Um, there are some, it looks like maybe seismic uh, volcanic activity down here. But uh, the cargo, the cargo light lands on just a barren like yellow dust uh, spot in the middle of nowhere and uh adana i assume you guys are in back suits yes i was just gonna do a pressure field but okay. they can do as they wish <laughs> that's a good point you, you can wear armor now <laughs> <laughs> I can't so, be comfy in sweatpants if I'm in a vac suit. You can wear sweatpants under your vac suit. It may not be as comfy, but... Is that official canon law? <laughs> sweatpants under a vac suit? I don't, <laughs> I don't know canon. <laughs> I'm not from NASA. We might have to ask one of the astronauts, can you wear sweatpants underneath your EVA suit? <laughs> So she walks, she goes about 200 yards uh, walking and then like looks around. You can see she's looking around and using the terrain, which 
for I guess Corval, since he's a survivor, he's he's into this. There are actually landmarks. I mean, piles of rock or some kind of outcropping or some sort of uh, you know dip in the in in the uh, uh, in the earth. So yeah, there are kind of once you start to look, you can see that there are places that you can figure out where you are. And she walks over and kind of like starts pushing this dirt. It's like almost like powder. It kind of just kind of this yellow mist comes up, and she pushes down, reaches her hand in, and then you hear a noise, and like the ground sort of opens up, and and the something turns, and you now you see steps that go down like a spiral staircase. I'm just going to look at Iden and go, oh, yeah, this is Sindhu's doing. Secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> and they begin, she begins to, to lead you guys down there. Uh, it is pitch black. Good thing Corvald's going to put on his uh, low light goggles. <laughs> He carries been carrying them for just such a situation. <laughs> just in case. I'm just gonna turn on the uh vac suits light that they have attached to the helmet. Uh and she, you know, you shoot the light around like the interior you can see is some kind of stone uh that's got all sorts of writing all over it. Looks you know like some kind of graffiti or something, like all inside here. Does it look recent? Like, uh, or is that like, are we even, are we able to tell? Uh, you know, recent, the last 10 years, probably. Are there any penises? Graffiti. Uh, make a notice roll. Okay. <laughs> it's a mosaic. It's a dick zayek. Oh, uh, that's uh, not bad, actually. That's eight. Okay. Uh, uh, you definitely find one that would, would pro you could probably identify as one, yes. Okay. So it definitely is graffiti then, and it's not writing saying something else. Or could it be sort of some sort of artistic expression? Mm. Just the middle finger. <laughs> Uh, you get to, so you finally get to the bottom. This long walk, and you can see that there's a little bit of light coming in from where you walk down. You can see it, this, the opening close uh, kind of like shifts around and it's closed. Um, and she walks over to like the wall and puts her hand on it. Um, and you can hear her speak some kind of words in some strange language. And the, and the door kind of, the, the outline kind of lights up. And then she just kind of says, let, let us go. And she like steps through the wall. Either this is gonna work or I'm gonna look really stupid and I'm just gonna walk into the wall. This is how Charlie joined. Uh, sneaky bastard. <laughs> Corval attempts to walk walk through the fourth wall. Uh, give me a mental save. Just Corval? Uh, if you're trying to get through, other than Anne May, if you're not uh, Anne May, Anne May doesn't need to make one. <laughs> Nat 20. 19, so pass. Yeah. Uh, you both have some sort of psionic uh, powers, psychic powers, and um, uh, you walk past through it easily. Uh, and you, you, once you step in, there's this large chamber that's lit up, and there's uh, looks like a chandelier's in the middle, and it's you know turning. It looks like it has candles burning in it. And there are all these people not they're not wearing vac suits. They've got like these long uh looks like gray robes. 
And as soon as they see uh, you all, they kind of begin to make their way, walk over. They see Adana and they're relieved. And then they all kind of, she whispers to them and says something and they all see uh, Amina. And they oh. all begin to huddle around her like, oh, Amina's returned. She is, she's returned. Um, hello? <laughs> Take off my helmet. Uh, yeah, you have like it's, it's it. Uh, there's no issue breathing. It's it's a little bit damp and musty down here, but mm -hmm. um, hello everyone. Um, good to see you again. Yes, we 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 were hoping you would return one day. Yes, um, of course. Um, so what's new? They all look at each other. Uh, Adana takes off her helmet and you can see she's got like the patches and they all kind of look at her face and like, oh my, what, what, what's happened? And then one of them steps forward and take kind of like, he's, they're all wearing like these gray clothes. He takes off his cloak. And he's got like these long, he's not long, but big glasses on with like a yellow glove that looks like a almost like an oven mitt and he reaches up and like puts it on her face and you can see that the glass is kind of like glow and that mitt gets like really bright almost so bright that you'd have to turn away from it and then as uh you you, you the light fades you look and her face uh looks healed there might be like a couple like age spots there now, but that just gives her character. Yeah. Oh, she says, uh, "Festa, Festa, thank you. It is, it is my pleasure. It is my pleasure." Yes, it's great to see you again, Festa. Oh, Amina. It's been quite some time. It it certainly has. I'll I'll offer a hug. <laughs> yeah, he he gives you a hug. How much damage will I take from that? Oh, no. Oh good good. Oh what? Uh, Madonna says we we have come here. We need your assistance. Obviously, Amina speak on this and they all eagerly await what you have to say hmm. how many of you remember our good friend niles Harvalds in the back i hate our bastard <laughs> <laughs> thank you you understand <laughs> they all kind of look at each other confused they're not sure they say. Oh, okay no. um kind of weird guy uh trying to manipulate time um, did that to her? He's no calling himself <laughs> Professor something. Professor something. Kronos. Professor Kronos. Yeah. Professor Kronos. That mean anything to anyone? Somebody raises their hand, like, and then they put it back. Yes. Thank you. You in the back. <laughs> <laughs> He is trying to cause all kinds of problems for everyone here. And we need to essentially go to the wrist system and blow him up. Yes. Otherwise, things are only going to get worse. But not if we blow him up. That is true. Making him explode would stop things from getting worse. Yes, yes, you. <laughs> Would we be able to come out of hiding and return to life and normal life in the sector if we help you? Absolutely. In fact, I have a job for all of you. <laughs> no hesitation on that promise at all. <laughs> <laughs> of course they can. They're going to wind up working for me on my ship. 
whether they want to or not. <laughs> Don't uh, worry, guys. There's a benefits package. Wink. <laughs> give me a talk roll. A talk roll. Okay. The thing I'm good at. All of that asserted by our uh, administrator. Yes. You, you can trust him. Payroll. Is that why I never get a check? <laughs> Is anyone else hearing that? Um, well, the good news is that I do have a hustle point. <laughs> yeah, that's much better news, actually. Uh, 13. They certainly don't know who Niles is. Maybe the professor, I mean, when you use the term professor, that kind of rings a bell because they're familiar with Sindhoom professors and yeah. probably think this is a Sindhoom person. And the fact that uh, some of them did things that were unscrupulous or uh, are shady characters is not surprising. And they do hold a certain resentment because nobody has come back and helped them. They've sort of been in hiding like, you know, children of the sector and uh, the sisters of karma would straight up murder us. But, you know, the Sindhoom everybody in Sindhu sort of forgot about us and had us wipe our minds and now we're stuck down here and they hadn't done anything for us. I haven't forgotten about you, though. I'm here for you. Oh, yes. Well, let us... Uh, we shall help you. We shall help you. I mean, if you can help us uh, get back to normal lives... We'll Maybe, give you uh, new lives, better yes. lives, <laughs> with dental and full coverage. And I'm going to look over to eye. Can we do eyesight as well? Probably. And eyesight. <laughs> I'm sure we could find something. And two weeks sick leave. <laughs> One and a half week sick leave. <laughs> well. Plus, stock options in the company. That, that's a fine promise. It's a sole proprietorship. There's no stock to be had, traded or bought or sold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if there ever is, we'll give them some stock. And then once we give them, right before we give them the stock, we'll split the stock, then we'll give it to them. Yep, that's what I was thinking. We'll split the shares and then give them one each. Yep. Your lives will be better than you could possibly imagine. <laughs> well, thank you for helping us. You won't regret it much. Indeed. <laughs> We're going to have a great time. So, who here knows how to collapse a city? Well, why would we collapse a city? Or to get rid of Niles. He's on a floating city in the Chris system on planet uh, Fatma. Have any of you heard of it? Fatma? Sky? No? Uh, no. Okay, I think we're going to have to do some background here. So, and I'm, I'm just going to go in a tirade about everything that has happened so far. Oh, dear. Explaining what happened on that planet, who Niles is, what Niles did to us, the horrendous evil things he's doing, the fact that he supposedly worked for Sindhoom and he's causing problems and he tried to kill us because he's a douchebag and all the usual stuff. I mean, all, what he did all, to Adana, people, all these people worked for Sindhoom too. Exactly, and they know how bad of a... They know that Sindhoom does not give a good severance package. Yeah, they just let you go early. Exactly, permanently. permanently. Yeah. yeah. And they say they're laying you off so they don't have to go ahead and, you know, give you your unemployment benefits and everything. We're going to lay you down. You mean lay off? No. <laughs> I love it when employees retire. Retire permanently. <laughs> so we must go to Agraria and to the Sky City and uh, bare minimum elimination Niles. Um, 
but they have this this city has been taking advantage of the uh, taking advantage of the agrarians, forcing them into labor for, and education re-education camps to support uh, Niall's perverted dream. So what do you guys do around here anyway? Is there like a Friday night bingo that I can get down <laughs> off there? They kind of look bingo. You know, like B27, O69. Um, or what do you do for fun? Surely not sit here and wait for Amina to show up. No, we uh, read our, do our numbers and letters and read our tomes and, and, and whatever we can do to keep our minds active. Very nice. I'm gonna go ahead and whisper to Ide. Kovald never offered to help me 069 in a long time. What's he doing here? <laughs> Make new friends, I guess. Let us take a look at this uh, this sky city. Perfect. Um, Corvold, I believe you have a data slate with the information on it. I do. Perfect. Turco comes over um, as he introduces himself as Turco, and he looks at your data slab, the uh, the data that's on there. He just kind of like you see him like quickly. Looks like he's analyzing it. And he like puts his hand over the the symbols. Uh, he puts his hand over like the screen, and then he concentrates. Oh no! Uh, Cor and so Corvald, you're showing him this, right? He reaches over and like puts his hand on your shoulder, and you are above like from for a second you were like above Sky City like floating, like you're getting like an aerial view of it. Whoa. <laughs> I'm flying. I'm flying. Um what's got like is it is it is a is there activity or is it kind of yeah a it's a vast it's a vast city of like metal structures with all these flying objects going everywhere. It looks very it looks very familiar. Like you have seen this in other visions. Does this look like the place uh that we kind of stepped into? Um does, does this look like the place that we stepped into when we were fighting Niles taking the statue? It does sound similar to that. Yeah, so you've had like two instances where uh, you've seen this thing. One was when Anne May went on the ship when she was in the mech and on the and smash it through the ship. And then you open the door and you were like in some room and there was this vast city you could see out the window. Mm -hmm. And then you were in a room that was with Niles, it looked like, and he was hooked up to a bunch of tubes in some kind of fluid. Yes. And then there was another one where uh, more recently where you went through the uh, the tentacle of Seville and yep. it destroyed and you, and you like flew around and then you looked out your had your rear camera and you clip a building and like all this fluid or yeah. something came out of a building. So yeah, it looks just like these, it looks just like those two places. Is Corvald floating alone or is he with... Um... Yeah, it's limited vision, but you have the you have the sense that somebody is with you. Can I see the uh, the the building that we clipped into, or like the one that had Niles in the room, or like can I tell? Uh, give me a notice roll. Oh, well, that's a three. I'm gonna use a I'm gonna use a uh, an action point for that one. It's an eight. 
you do catch a glimpse like you that you see a building that looks familiar and give me a fix roll wow so you distinctly see the building and you can see the part of the building that you that your ship clipped and it has been repaired uh then uh, you know somebody would uh, and the naked eye wouldn't catch it but you catch the slight dev uh different color and they just it, um it just doesn't exactly match up each piece but that's you know your uh, discerning eye picks that up and behind the glass the the fluid now has like a yellow sheen to it and the, this building is just full of this yellow fluid. What the? And as you're kind of like floating down, getting closer to these zipping, you know, like small little drone crafts, these little machines flying everywhere, all of a sudden in like, like a swarm of, you know, almost like uh, how a swarm of birds move like in unison, Mm -hmm. They all seem to turn and like the whole sky just comes right at you like immediately. And you, you're back in the room next to that guy who's like, oh, thank you for your, uh, thank you for that. Now I have seen this, this sky city. I have seen it too. Are you a psychic? Uh, some may some would say that, yes. Mm, your specialty is seeing things far off. Yes, I, 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 I can, I can see those things. Sometimes I, I'm able to see things uh, in the future, but uh, it's very limited. Thank you for sharing your gift with me. Oh, you're quite welcome. So that's the place we're headed to. And it's the place that Niles is camped out in. He has some sort of personal connection with the city. And that's where we must go, if you are still uh, willing to help. Yes, we will. Uh, we shall discuss this. Uh, I don't think there's any reason not to help. Nothing better to do, right? Help us or just sit here in your cave? Well, it's quite accommodating in here. We don't mind it. Wait, does your food processor make things that don't taste like prunes? That don't taste like prunes? Yeah. I'm trying to get something that does taste <laughs> like prunes. Could really use some prunes. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. I was gonna, I was gonna race across the room and try to get to the food machine before Corval reprograms it. I will have you know that our ship's food process uh, has food that tastes like prunes. That's one of the perks. <laughs> We have it next to the ping pong tables. Well, no, the shuffleboard squares. They're very, very interested in these. Like a, like a senior citizen startup. <laughs> yeah. Prune juice on tap with a shuffleboard instead of uh, beer uh, kegs and ping pong. I'm right. What is your desire to, to head to this Boros now? I mean, to head to the Sky City? As soon as possible. The longer we wait, the worse things are going to get. Yes. Dr. Crono is trying to mess with time. Hmm. If we take too long, he might be able to go back and change something. Let us collect our things. So as they kind of shuffle around this big room, you can see that there's a few doors. It's a pretty big area. So you can see these doors are opening, kind of going into their chambers um collecting things um and they all at uh 
at some point, all of them sort of vanish behind these doors to collect their items. And Adana uh, follows them. And you see a door next uh, that didn't seem like it was there open and Charlie walks through. Oh my. Well, he'll just show up anywhere, won't he? Good morning, Charlie. You have to teach me how you do that. I will. I was, you're not on the ship anymore. Hmm. I was worried about that. Why? I need a refill and he's got his cup. And he turns it out. Oh, it's empty. I need some more prune paste. Well, actually, I think I can uh, I can fix this fix this up. They have their own food processor here. It just isn't prune flavored, but oh, I was supposed to find you information about um Sky City. There is a, a central control node. The, the the Lady of Fire wishes you to deactivate it, destroy it. Where is this node? It is located in the uh, the heart of the city. Do we have any idea what type of defenses the city has besides those robot things? No, I am unaware of whatever defenses they have. Well... Our ship won't land, so we're going to have to go down to that little cargo lot. And it's not exactly built for combat. I figured I'll just crash it into one of the buildings. Preferably the one with Niles in it. The ship? Mm-hmm. The cargo lot. Oh, the cargo lot. Well, that's assuming they don't have any aerial defense, but... We'll deploy F-350 first by dropping him from the cargo light high above. <laughs> Hashtag no fall damage. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Fallout 4 power on me. He takes no fall damage. We also have grab shoots available if needed. I can go down if I have to and disable any air defenses if there are any. When these... The central control road, it's in the heart of the city. Is that in the middle of the city on the surface? In like the middle of the city underground? Or uh, like in, on a, in a building? He pulls out like a, looks like a pen or something. Uh, and starts drawing like a quick outline of the city and puts a dot. And you see, it's kind of like it's just below the surface. Maybe whatever keeps it in the sky is in that building, too. And if we blow them both up, the whole thing will just fall. I have a feeling that's the case. At least deactivate the robots and machines. That would be helpful. So oh. he, he, uh, he draws you this. Gotcha. Wonder. And when you talk about you know, crashing the city. He's like, no, I don't think the Lady of Fire would appreciate that. Well, just deactivating the robots would be a good move. Well, it would at least free those who have been re-educated. Exactly. It would at least put the city uh, into a bit of chaos at, for some time. But she, she would like, uh, you know, those who those who are innocent to be to be able to be uh, freed of their time there. Well then, I solemnly swear that I will do everything in my power to free those people. You have any additional questions? Once we take out the control node and deal with Niles, we'll be able to go ahead and send a distress signal out to the children of the sector. They'll be able to send people to help pacify the situation. That'll probably be our best bet. I really hope, anyway. Well, if there's the offer of possible big bucks for coming and freeing them, they'd probably be willing to. Well, they were mercenaries before. Maybe we could just hire them. Uh, the Sisters of Karma? Yeah. 
Uh, not with what little money we have, they're very expensive. <laughs> so Adana comes out, um, doesn't look like she has anything, collected anything, and begins to walk over and uh, Charlie's like, bids you would do as he walks to the wall again and the, his little drawing on the, uh, like that he made on the wall just kind of vanishes. She comes over and says, so do you, do you have a plan? Kind of. We need to get to the center of the city somehow. So clearly it's not a good plan. Do you know anything about this city? No, but I know that I know that Niles is very powerful in that city, as you have uh, you have probably seen. What do you mean? Does he control it somehow? No, he is. Uh, he said something about tapping into its its potential. Interesting. Like the nano machines within the people, or something more. He said something about remote viewing that he could, he could insert himself into where people were. Suddenly, I don't have a desire to keep taking showers on the ship. I'm going to have to deal with him carefully. Then, do you know what building he might be in? Oh no! I just hope it. We find him quickly. And get in and get up. And then uh, and then we won't have to worry about him anymore. Indeed. I did chase after him in the mech suit. It's been 30 days. Any damage to the building would probably be repaired. Oh, no, it was repaired. What do you mean? I was... Our friend here has the ability to do remote viewing, or at least transport, and uh, he showed me what it looks like right now. Wait, you, you know which building it is? You know where it is? I know which building, I know which building the, uh, the ship ran into. I'm not sure which one the mech, uh, the mech, uh, uh, ripped across. Right. Although it, while it wasn't completely obvious, uh, it it did show signs of. Uh, it did show they did use a different color of paint or some different materials, so there was some some sign of um, the damage that once was anyway. Almost undoubtedly, now it's handiwork. That Sindum's level of cra shoddy craftsmanship. Most definitely. So if we went, the, if we if if we looked around for uh, imperfections, um, for a building with them, uh, for the Mac, uh, where your Mac went ripped across, and we might be able to at least find it, find it that way. My hope, or maybe there's a way. I'd have an idea. Tell me, what does Niles think of our group as a whole? I don't know. Oh, he is uh, he's definitely fascinated by it. Fascinated? He, yes, he. Uh... I think he feels as though um, you can be some assist assistance to him, I, I would assume. You said he's practicing with remote viewing? Well, that was his, uh, what he did at Sindhoom. I mean, he mm -hmm. is a very uh, strange technology from what, uh, from what little I've gathered from it. I'm going to describe the machine we saw when we were in the mech suit and he was suspended in that um, device, that uh, suit and the liquid and everything and see if that seems to light any bells. Yeah, I mean, she's, she says that, uh, yeah, it sounds, it sounds like 
sounds like something you would have to do to be able to create the the right environment to um to do such a thing we have a way of contacting him i, I think if you try hard enough him i think you you probably could what's what are you thinking yes what are you thinking I'm thinking he might just invite us to meet with him. If our group could be viewed as useful to him, he might be willing to let us in on some things. Especially now that I have my old name to play with. He's loyal to Sindum, correct? Oh, yes. To a fault. Perhaps if I let him know that I have my old name back and that I want to get back into the fold, he'll be willing to open up to us. He would have recognized you. He may have recognized me, but I was going with a different name at the time. And he'd have known then that my memory had been wiped. But now that's returned, he might be willing to work with us then. Perhaps. I feel yeah. like you would suspect treachery. Oh, most certainly. He'd be a fool not to. But if I go in alone on his territory and turf, I'll be able to locate him. Then the rest of you can go ahead and deal with the power source. And I'll be able to, to keep Niles occupied long enough that you can hopefully get back to me in time, especially with your ability to teleport, Corvald. We can keep radio communications up and you can use my locator beacon to find my location. And that's fair. Theoretically, it should be quick. If anything too goes too wrong, we could always just come back to the ship and take charge ourselves. If anything goes horrendously pear-shaped, then... Um, yeah, the only one at risk will be myself. Maybe you could take the truck with you. That is true. F-350 and I have been together for a long time. In fact, we work for the same organization. Really? Indeed. Do any of you remember F-350? <laughs> No, they're kind of they're, they're, as they're coming out they're like truck can become a mech thing you mean Saab 900 Saab 9 oh god he's going to have a heart attack when he finds out <laughs> <laughs> he's got an even longer name he's just not going to like that they all get excited at the fact that he's he, he's around you remember him? He always required maintenance. Oh, yeah. They are like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, that'd be perfect. Well, I have to let F I have to let Sob 900 know the truth. <laughs> well, Adana, uh, listen, <laughs> these are all re uh, regaling stories of Sob 900. Adana comes to you and says, Instead of you going and, and creating this distraction, let 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 me do this. I will create the distraction, and I believe, Vesna, we could create a way, a, a sort of a back door to, to to get in. I will occupy, I will occupy him the best that I can. But wouldn't he suspect you above all others? He did imprison you there. I think that's what she's counting on. Yes, he... He won't be looking for us if he's busy trying to catch her. That is true. That does make sense. Okay, then. What are you thinking? Uh, I will take the your permission take the ship into the into the system mm -hmm. 
and then oh. Fesna here should be able to create a back entrance for you to enter. From here? Yes. Fesna, you continue to impress. He comes walking over with his big yellow oven mitt and his big glasses. Oh, I heard my name. <laughs> Indeed. We have a mission for you, Festa. <laughs> yes, how can I be of service? You're going to have to make a back door into Sky City. Oh. And, uh, yes, the best way. To the main dimensional up. space. Exactly. Corvold, would you be able to come up with an approximate location on the map of um, where the control center is? I didn't see one. But they, up there. We, we were showed the um, thing on the wall by Chris. You mean Charlie? Charlie, that's it. <laughs> well, I was kind of above the city looking down um if that's based on that i guess it would be in the center i don't know did i notice did corvald notice any like were there any like was the the layout of the city in such a way where there, there was like a, a like a geographic center to it like yeah you know, i would say with your role you identified like so you identified the building in your role, you identified what, that they had fixed it. You could point out, you could, if you find that building, you can find where the, the center approximately would be. Because we know approximately how deep underground it is. So if we can find out from a horizontal perspective, we should be able to get a pretty accurate location where to teleport into. Yeah. We can have sub 900 D. We could. We can check the data slate for any records of the city. There might be something online about it. Yes. Is there a... How do we know that you're just not going to leave with the ship? You asking Adana this? Yeah. <laughs> well, I cannot fly. So you'll need a pilot. Well, not necessarily. She'll just need someone to set a course. Pretty sure if one of you does all the navigation work, I can push the button and makes it jump. It's a simple mathematical formula. That's what I keep telling you about the organizing the cargo bay, but I don't see you running down there trying it. That is not a simple mathematical formula. That involves the Dewey Decibel system in some locations and in other locations. A to Z alphabetization. I don't use either of those systems. I got my own. That explains so much. <laughs> yeah, I don't want you being able to find all the good shit. How am I going to sell it if you drink it all? Wait, what? Relax. We don't have any on board right now. Well, that's fair. It's settled then. Yep. Everyone get a good night's rest and let's suit up and get ready to go. So you guys fly back up to the ship. Uh, they stay down there. You set uh, the course because it's basically one jump, right? Yeah, it's one, yeah, yep. one jump. <laughs> so you basically set all that up, go through it with the tour manager because he's the de facto captain. A couple of the uh, those from the Order of the Dead Light uh, that basically uh, you would know they trained to be pilots. So one of them would uh, pilot if necessary. <laughs> Do you have piloting, right? Yes. Okay. What level is it at? My piloting is at level two. Okay. Uh, it's a three now. Oh, 
okay. as you uh, have spent time with them and begin to remember your skills. Oh my. Goes but, all Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> but um, they say that uh, in order to do this, what they're going to have to do is um, you're going to have to come back down there and they are going to send you through the metadimensional space in their chamber. So you're so, all geared up, got your vac suits. It's what, the three of you? We we know that the planet has breathable atmosphere, Sky City, correct? Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm going in a combat uniform then. As much armor as I can get. Okay. And yeah. I'll... I'll, I'll pressure field us on the way back into the base since there was no atmosphere here until you get to underground. What'd you do? Get all the explosives you could hold? I only have six demo packs with me. Yeah. And a few grenades and uh, mag mm -hmm. rifles and usual stuff. Corvald <laughs> and I are just going to bring our standard equipment. You're going to bring enough demo packs to bring down a small city. <laughs> well, considering those robots we fought before, I want demo packs for those things. <laughs> <laughs> the Sentinel things were scary. <laughs> Please stand still while I attach this to your chest piece. <laughs> yeah, I'm eating it. <laughs> I'm going to do my best impersonation of a wizard. Eatus deletus. Boom. <laughs> just, just, just go back down to the planet. Um. You step down there, like there's like a depression. It's a large circular area where you were in before with these doors. It's it's huge. It's like a huge and a very tall, very high ceiling. Um, you know, it was kind of like a a dome ceiling. But in the, it, the there's a depression in the middle, and uh, Vesna has you sit around you know, like a close to the circle, almost in the middle. And uh, Turco comes out, who uh, who gave you that vision of Sky City, and uh, takes the 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 data slab from you, and kind of holds it. And Vesta uh, says, you know, in his with his yellow oven mitt, best of luck to you. We will, we will, we will, uh, we will pick you up. Um, somebody should probably fly the cargo light back up to the ship. That way, Adana has a way to land. Yeah, yeah. They've got yeah. pilots here. Yeah, that'll be good. So Vesna puts his yellow oven mitt in the center of you guys, squats down, and then steps away, and it, it, it kind of leaves a a yellow impression and then all of a sudden out of the center of the room starts to rise what looks like a spike drive with oh. a black crystal attached to it and then the uh the spike drive starts to generate as you probably have never seen you've never been in the room when it's when it's uh, gone off and the black crystal oh, awesome. begins to to glow this black color and this black ichor just starts to come out of it and roll down and it goes all over Turco immediately. It like covers him holding the data slab and he's just like covered in it. And it comes, starts to come up to you guys and slowly crawl over your vac suits. And then, and then in an instant, you're on a ship. There is smoke. There's alarms going off. And it says, danger, impact, imminent, acting exactly 2,000 meters. And you realize that you're on the ship again as it's crashing onto uh, this moon. And you see the jungle, the green jungle in, in, in front of you. Uh, where are we on the ship? Uh, wherever you were danger, when the ship was about to crash, imminent. so at your stations. Uh, whether it be navigation yeah. or piloting or pretty, going to to save it. <laughs> pretty sure I was in my usual spot. <laughs> Cargo hold. Yep. 
strapped to F-350. Should I say Saab 900? <laughs> Is past Carlton back here with me? Uh, no. Danger impact imminent. Okay, so we didn't time jump. And is going to have both feet on the brakes and be pulling up on the stick, hoping that something happens. Okay, give me a pilot. Uh, okay, uh, I can do that. Uh, Maybe. Uh, <clears throat> uh, things. The amount of math in this character sheet is too damn high. Danger impact imminent. Well, with that, it's a uh, 15 total. No. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, so you are clearly. Uh, uh, steering, uh, being able to do countermeasures to get this ship to land. Uh, uh, As before, it was uh, much more difficult. Uh, uh, Dustin, give me a D10. Uh, uh, Four. Uh, and as you're at your station, you see that you see all these warning signs that they realize uh, that all the engines, uh, the impulse power, uh, all these engines are about to lock up. Uh, like uh, pressure and things are dropping. Like this, en the engines are going to basically lock up. I'd say Corp will try to see if he could apply, uh, see if he could try to fix it. Okay. Um, Back to exactly 1,000 meters. I don't know. Maybe he could redirect power uh, into the engines from a different, a different part of the different part of the ship. Okay. You know, maybe the toilet uh, stopped working. Uh, or... uh, uh, <laughs> With what Corvo does in uh, those things, I don't. I, I'd, I'd rather crash. <laughs> <laughs> we need those poop propellers in there. All right, give me a uh, 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 fix. Uh, uh, it's a, a fix for six. Uh, uh, okay, so you have. Uh, you you have uh, managed to deal with some of it. Uh, the engines are still going to seize, but probably and may or Emily may land before that happens. Uh, I you're in the cargo hold. Is the is F three fifty back here? Uh, no. No. Don't There's like was... nothing back in the cargo hold. I was going to jump do... in the truck and buckle up, but I guess that's off the table. But you do <laughs> see in like the far corner some kind of yellow liquid uh, leaking uh, out of what looks like the uh, ceiling uh, uh, and like uh, like landing, uh, dripping onto uh, the, to the floor. Uh, I'm going to slowly approach that with my rifle out and see if I can figure out what it is. It's some kind of viscous yellow liquid. And it's just coming down from the ceiling and hitting the floor. Is it like yeah. is it melting the floor or is it just dripping and kind of puddling up? Yeah, just drip dripping and puddling up. Oh, well, it's piss. <laughs> you activated the toilets. I'll uh, go find some part of fasten up a safety belt just in case we still crash. So as the, the vehicle is just, uh, the engines kind of kick out and may, and you're just about to brace for impact. A figure walks through the uh, the the ship, and you would remember this happened the last time. Uh, but this time you can see the person's face, and it is Niles. Uh, with his uh, very definitive features. Um, he is finely dressed in a smoking jacket. And he says, uh, oh, you'll be uh, joining me? As he's walking through the ship, looking at all of you smiling, and he just kind of vanishes as he walks out of the helm. And the I ship comes back one skid uh, and uh, knocks a bunch uh, of trees down. Uh, Everybody give me... Uh, well, let's go with uh, evasion. Yep, my dice box was at a weird angle. Let's try rolling that again. So we have to get a dice roll. I got to fail. Why don't you do that? Sounded like fun. I also failed. Let's see why I need to pass. 
I got an 11 and I needed an 11. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm assuming you have vac suits on. What is their damage reduction? I have a pressure field, so it doesn't have any of that fanciness. Okay, we'll just say you take uh, three damage. Okay. I have combat on my on. I don't think it has a DR. <laughs> okay, you don't take any. Uh, you don't take any damage. If you fail, to take six damage unless you've got um, some sort of uh, vaccine. I got a damage reduction of three. Uh, okay, so, so uh, you take three damage, and your damage reduction, your suit is a two now. Negates the negates the healing that I got from last uh, my. <laughs> from the resting. <laughs> yeah. So as you are, like, ship hits the ground, you all kind of flung around, pieces of uh, debris go everywhere. It comes to a halt. And then, you know, you can hear the beeping, the emergency uh, beacons going off. Undo my seatbelt and see what's going on. So stepping over the debris, uh, obviously you find uh, Corvald. Corvald looks around and and uh, teleports so that he's standing again. Okay. And wipes himself down. Yeah, and when you do, you realize there's this yellow viscous fluid that's on you, and you real you see that like in the cracks of the ship. It's coming down. It's like leaking down out of these cracks. I'm going to examine it further to see if I can like ascertain what it is or like its properties. Like uh, it's obviously not corrosive. Um, yeah, but. It, it, uh, it, when you do a, a scan of it, you pull your uh, scanner out. It's got a big crack on the on the screen. Damn. Um, and it it registers as embryonic fluid. Embryonic fluid. Oh my God, Corvold, are you okay? <laughs> this is. I am fine. We're covered in embryonic fluid. Um, I beg your pardon. The are you, are you covered in yellow goo? Am I covered in yellow goo? No. Um, no. Do you do you see this yellow goo that's everywhere? Um, yes, that's embryonic. What happened? We were in the place, and then we are here on the ship again. Well, I imagine that we are. Uh teleported correctly, but uh, at the wrong time. Now said we'd be joining him soon when he came through. Um, but you stole Niles? Yeah. Uh, oh, I you're here. Good. How's no, I'm, I'm on my way, but I got my comms on. Oh, are, are you okay? I'm fine. I just tripped a little bit. Where's Corvold or F-350 or... Anyone else? I'm here. Corfalt's up there with you. I mean, C Carlton. I guess they didn't come back. Sob 900, can you hear me? <laughs> There's no answer. Um, okay. <sighs> we gotta get out of here. You Sorry. hear a banging on the side of the ship. Hey, they in there. Uh, whereabouts is coming from? Like the side of the ship, like where uh, a hatch is. And if you look over, you can see like it's damaged. And then you oh. see like a little piece of metal, like a pry bar gets stuck in there. Anybody in there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't don't open that yet. Corvald looks like he fell a little harder than I did, or 
maybe just didn't get rested enough from before, but I think I can help him a little bit. And I'm going to walk over and touch Corvald and use Psychic Sucker. So he's going to get one system strain added to him and six hit points. Oh, I feel much better. Yeah, just, you know, don't don't try to get into a sword fight with like a bull or something. I will try not to, but no guarantees, you know. <laughs> the bull is feisty enough. I swear those six hit points are always coming and going and going and coming. <laughs> it's always too soon. <laughs> who's, who's there? Hello? Uh, are you, you okay in there? <laughs> Well, here, hold on, let me see. I'm going to go up to the door and see if I can open up the emergency release or anything. Yeah, it kind of it kind of opens like, oh, it's struggling, and you can see this human figure. It's, it's got like a pry bar, and he's pulling it and helping it up. Pulls yeah, it up. Kicking it. <laughs> and he looks panicked. Like, and you see he's got like a cut-off shirt with pants and a uh, disheveled hair and and uh he's got like a, a shirt that's got like a name tag but it's got a bunch of dirt and stuff on it and mm -hmm. he's like oh my god are you are you okay what happened it just came out of the sky that, that's generally what ships ha do when they're crashing yeah uh, are we in the grist system what no i just got here from where I don't know. I haven't been here that long. Does this guy look familiar? Yeah. Yes. Shorter. Who? Shorter? No, it's Memento. Memento. Shorter was the other guy. <laughs> yeah. Memento. What? Memento? No, no. And he reaches down at his name tag and wipes the dirt off. He's like, no, I'm Diana. And stop right there. I thought you died in a car accident with paparazzi <laughs> chasing you. I thought you were prettier. <laughs> on, on a note, uh, Memento is based off, loosely based off the movie Memento, if any of you have ever seen it. I don't think I have. It is worth watching. I definitely remembers Memento because he was trying to loot a bunch of our stuff off the ship and I wouldn't like that. <laughs> yep you could say this is a momentous occasion thank you very much peter uh, well i appreciate it guys it was fun <laughs> all Bye. right take care yeah later